Welcome to the Sandbox Comprehensive Player Model Guide Episode 2. Here we got our player from Episode 1 and we'll want to give it some physics because currently there are none. And you can preview that by going down here and pressing Toggle Physics Sim. And of course nothing is gonna happen, so let's do something about that. Let's start by adding a new node. Go to Add and search for Physics Shape. Here you are given 4 basic shapes. Let's go for the capsule, since it's a popular shape. You are now prompted to parent a shape to a bone. For now let's select none. A small capsule pointing forward has appeared on the ground. Before we start the simulation, we need to make the capsule represent our model's shape better. First off, it needs to be standing upright. As you can see from the node editor, a capsule is made of two points and a radius. The default settings place the first point at zero, and the second point at slightly forward. Let's change the X axis to 0, the forward axis, and the Z to 70, the up axis. There we go. Now we've got the height, but not the girth. We can change the radius to, let's say 10. Looks just about right. But now the top and bottom have changed. The points are the same, it's just that now they have a larger radius. We'll be here forever if we have to type out the numbers each time, so instead we'll use the viewport controls those little dots represent the points. You can move them around with the left mouse. We'll use the little arrows. They allow you to slide the points along the middle. That's good. The circle in the middle controls the radius. I say we were fine before. Lastly, if you go back to the node editor, you can change the surface property. Currently it's at default, which gives it a calculated mass of 600 kilograms What's the fault made of? You can manually set the mass using physics body markup, but let's not bother with that. Let's change the surface property to flesh instead. Now it's 20 kilograms. Oh well, it's better than before. I guess that's because it's hollow. It even says here the thickness is about 0.3 inches. A little under a centimeter if you remember the magic numbers. And now start the simulation. You can toss the models around with your mouse. Yeah, look at him go! Ok, delete the capsule. I'll show you a couple other ways. Add a new node and search for just physics this time. Here are 4 new options to choose. Physics hull file, physics hull from render, physics mesh file and physics mesh from render. First off, what's the difference between a physics hull and a physics mesh? A hull only allows you to use convex shapes while the mesh allows you to use concave shapes as well. That sounds swell. Let's go ahead and use physics mesh from render then. Again, select none. Wow, look at this. Pixel perfect physics. This is awesome. And now if we start the simulation, nothing happens. We can also see that it doesn't have any mass. This is because a physics mesh is only used for static objects. Think map geometry. Rocks, houses, trees, good for performance and precise collision, but not so much for actually moving around. To keep it short, it's for performance. So instead, we are forced to use physics hull. If we delete the physics mesh from render, and add a physics hull from render. Wow, looks great. This is what we call a shrink wrapped geometry. You transform a concave mesh into a convex hull. It's very underwhelming compared to what we had earlier, at least it works. Here in the node editor, you can even limit the number of vertices per hole, zero being no limit, while the face merge angle is useful to reduce the number of faces by merging nearby faces. It seems pretty intuitive, but really it gives off random results. What the? I guess 40.57 degrees is off limit. While we're looking here, let's explore this section of the node editor a bit. Currently, we are viewing the mass of the hole. Realistically, you don't really care that much for this stat. So switch over to shape info. Here you are given the number of shapes and vertices of your hole. As you can see, it's color coded. The greener it is, the more performance friendlier it is. Do pay attention to this. Simulating physics is a considerable calculation. The computer power increases exponentially for every shape and vertex. It is vital to keep your collisions as simple as possible. Let's tinker with the settings a little. 
now the number is a nice shade of green. Man, I'm back to a basic shape. I guess basic shapes are the best for performance. Let's try something more complex. Delete this. Go grab the literal only file you had to download for this episode. Drag it into a folder and now add a new node. Search for physics whole file. Select the player hole you just downloaded. And we still have a convex hole. However, in the node editor, if you scroll down, you can see import mode. Currently it's set to single hole. Let's change that to hole per mesh. Ho ho ho, big news! We seemingly made a concave hole, but if you look closer, you can see that really, it's made up of many convex holes. As we know, one of FBX's specialization is being able to hold multiple meshes in a single file. If you check the file in Blender, you'll see I've split it up into 15 convex meshes. If you ever wondered why you could crash a Gmod server by welding two or more half spheres into each other, it's because they are made up of tens of convex holes to make it appear concave. This is what I meant when I said to keep things at a minimum. Just two props are enough to lag an entire server if the collisions are complex enough. That said, our numbers aren't looking great either. You can see it's in the red. And you can even scroll down and see its individual mesh. 59 vertices. By default, it tries to optimize the collisions. You can change how it optimizes your mesh over here in the optimization algorithm. But somehow it's making it even worse. Currently it's set to quadric error metric. Since our model is already low poly, let's try exact hole. This will avoid trying any optimization. You can see that the verts are almost hard, but we can go even lower. Select incremental vertex reduction. This is a pretty good option. And if we change the surface property back to flash and go to the mass info, Wow, 85 kilograms. That does check out for the average finish man. Before starting the simulation, let's force the bind pose, so the pose matches the actual physics. Since we haven't actually bound it to any bones, let's try it now. Perfect. Although he is looking a little stiff, let's give this guy a little articulation. To make a ragdoll, you need two things, joints and physics bodies. However, joints can only exist when parented to a physics body that's already parented to a bone. You also want to have at least two physics bodies, which we will add now. So delete the hole, we won't use this, instead add a physics shape capsule. This time we will parent it to a bone, let's try making the knee joint. So first we do the upper leg, then repeat the process for the lower leg. Now add a new node and search for physics joint. These are all of the types of joints you have at your disposal. Out of these we will only use revolute and conical. We'll use revolute for this joint since it's the shrimplest one. This joint revolves around a single axis, kinda like a revolving door, which is perfect for these hinge type joints like the knee or the elbow. You'll notice it didn't ask you what bone to parent it to, you have to select it manually in the node editor. The parent of the joint will be the upper leg. As you can see you can only select bones with physics. And the child will be the lower leg. The joint's position is automatically set to the parent's location. However we want it down here to the knee. Let's move it down. You could use the selection widget. But unlike the capsule, you don't have an arrow to slide between the middle. So instead, we'll use another widget. You can switch it out on the top left. You have the default selection widget. Then the translation or move widget, rotation, scale, and then you can switch to world space or local space. So let's select the translation widget and change to local space. This will allow us to slide a bone along the x axis using the red arrow, while the little squares allow you to move along a plane. Now, if we start the simulation, what the barnacles? It seems we have encountered a very common mistake when dealing with ragdolls. Joints can't just start from anywhere. If they are disconnected from the rest of the body, they will fall off. I guess we're good if we intend to make a Roblox ragdoll, but I'd rather not. To fix it, all joints must lead to one common bone, usually the pelvis or the root bone. We're not quite there yet, so I'm gonna cheat for the sake of making it easier. 
delete the upper leg capsule and instead add physics mesh from render. Parented to the upper leg and even though these two seem to be occupying the same space, a parent and a child will always ignore each other's collision. This method is pretty useful to test out joints as physics meshes are static and will remain in place. Let's start the simulation and wow, it only took us 10 minutes to get something moving. However, real knees can't bend 360 degrees. If you go into the node editor, we can enable limits and define a range of motion using these sliders. You can preview which direction the limit rotates to, in this case minimum angle rotates counterclockwise. Let's set it to minus 100 and a maximum to 15. And now it works correctly. Although in this case, the limits in the viewport don't match the actual limits, since the joint inherited the rotations of the upper leg, which differs from those of the lower leg. You can rotate the anchor angles to match the rotation of the lower leg. This is only a visual change that's not reflected anywhere, but it will allow you to preview the real limits in the viewport. So let's go ahead and change the anchor angles. PYR, where's XYZ? Don't worry, the interface hasn't switched to Cyrillic. When you're talking about rotations along an axis, we use pitch, yo, and roll. These are called the Euler angles. To better demonstrate, look at the values while I rotate this axis. Pitch is kind of like a water pitcher, pouring water into a glass. Roll is kind of like the barrel roll from the famous Star Fox series. And yo is like saying no, so rotating your head left to right. If we're equating it to an axis, pitch, yo, and roll would be like y, z, and x. Right, let's see. If the forward axis is pointing to the next bone, and the up axis is pointing to the side, because I'm an idiot, and so is valve, then uh, yo it is. Let's do 10. Alright, it's counterclockwise, so minus 10. Now it's rotated correctly. Now, I hear you screaming through the screen. Please, for the love of God, don't tell me I have to repeat this for all of the bones. Well, don't worry, because yes, we have a wizard that can do all of this for us. Why did I not tell you in the beginning? I did say in the first 3 seconds that this was a comprehensive guide, however, this is where I split the video since it's getting long enough. See you next episode for the quick and easy way to make ragdolls.